Good to see all of you this morning here in this place as we worship together. Uh, for announcements, enjoy. We have quite a bit of uh, things coming up here as we kick off for the fall season. So with that, uh, a reminder to look at the bulletin for the different special services. Our fall kickoff Sunday, October 6th, will be at 9.30 with a potluck following. Um, and there's also a single service on September 29th at 9.30. And then for Crop Walk, there will be a fundraiser at Applebee's on September 24th, with the Crop Walk uh, Sunday being October 6th at the Riverside Park at 2. I'm going to come and support all for the Crop Walk as the uh, money goes to providing food for those that do not have food. Um, also, starting October 2nd, we'll, we will resume on Wednesdays at 9, the Coffee with Pastor. Uh, for now, we will resume at Big Cats, and then the idea is maybe once a month go on little trips to different places in town. So we'll begin uh, together joining in fellowship again with coffee and study. Um, also, volunteers are needed for media ministries. If you are interested in assisting, it would be advancing the slideshows here at the 11 o'clock or the 9 o'clock service. Uh, please talk to Caleb. It's always helpful to have even a handful of those so that if someone is not able to make it on a Sunday, uh, we have someone to advance the slide. Are there other announcements this morning? Go ahead, Dan. Oh, wonderful. So a big joy this morning for Dan and Miranda, and also prayers for the next uh, days ahead and months ahead. So. Are there other joys or concerns this morning? I did receive a prayer request here uh, that we would lift up the family of Jessica Higdon, uh, who died tragically this past week. So we want to lift up uh, the family of Jessica Higdon, um, in our prayers. Uh, the family of Jessica Higdon, uh, who died tragically this past week. So prayers for their family and friends as they grieve. Are there any other joys or concerns? Well, let us prepare for prayer this morning as we join in singing, O Lord, hear my prayer. Holy and gracious God, as we gather together this morning, we come with hearts poured out to be in your presence, hearts filled with joy and excitement, but also with fear and worry. And also, God, we some come with grief and suffering. However, as we come this morning, God, we come knowing that you hear our prayers God, we lift up great joy for Dan and Miranda with new life forming and growing. And God, we pray that uh, you be with both of them, but uh, also with Miranda as uh, the days ahead come. Uh, we also pray that uh, they're able to get sleep right now, God. Uh, we also want to lift up to you this morning a great uh, suffering and grief, God, for the family of Jessica Higdon, 
uh, in the tragic uh, death that has happened this past week. God, uh, you know all the details and the, and the suffering that has been endured. You know all that are grieving this day, and we uh, lay it at your feet that you might surround with strength, uh, with uh, hope, God, beyond the present moment. God, we lift all of this to you this morning, as well as any unspoken prayers upon our hearts. We lay it at your feet as we join together, reminded and join in saying the prayer that your son, Jesus, taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Let us greet one another this morning. Good morning. 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 Good morning. Good morning. If our children would gradually make their way forward as well this morning. Good morning. Oh, I'm going to explain a bit on that here. Yes. All right, well, welcome this morning. I do have a piece of cardboard, uh, but more importantly, it's what's on this cardboard this morning. It has an arrow, right? So this arrow actually is meant to go this direction. Yep, why do you think it's meant to go that direction? What's up? Up, climb. Yeah, that's a good climb. It also has on top of this arrow, it says God. So God, we, we put an arrow as up as if we are trying to reach God in the heavens, uh, but God is with us here on earth. Uh, this arrow represents directions. Do you know sometimes uh, you need to navigate directions? We use like a GPS or we use a map, and there's usually some sort of way you go. Like a compass will show you north, this arrow shows us that we need to go to God, so we straight ahead. And God uh, wants us to draw near to God. And in our scripture passage today, James reminds us that in order to know what it means to have faith and to show our life reflections, it means we have to draw near to God first. So you need to draw near to God and follow the arrow, which leads us to heaven. What if this arrow was pointing down? Anyone? What's down? What might that symbolize? Down, yeah. Sometimes we associate down as like the earth and in hell and not in the direction that leads us to God, right? We want to navigate up and be closer to God. What is it? Yeah, they dig too. That's right. All right, so we are reminded this morning, you, you need to be encouraged that going upward towards God will help grow your faith and wisdom in knowing what, what the right things to do, and when we draw near to God, God draws near to us. Let us pray, if you will repeat after me, dear God, help me to draw near to you. Draw near to me and guide me in your way. Amen. Here you are.
be seated. I love the Lord, who has heard my voice and my supplications, and has inclined his ear to me whenever I called. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous, our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. When I was brought low, the Lord saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I kept my faith even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my consternation, all humans are painful. What shall I return to the Lord for all my benefits? I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have loosened my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and all the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Our scripture passage this morning comes from James chapter 3. It is a continuation in the book of James, starting with verse 13. Hear these words. Are any of you wise and understanding? Show that your actions are good with a humble lifestyle that comes from wisdom. However, if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, then stop bragging and living in ways that deny the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above. Instead, it is from the earth, natural and demonic. Wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there is disorder and everything that is evil. What of the wisdom from above? First, it is pure, then peaceful, gentle, obedient, filled with mercy and good actions, fair and genuine. Those who make peace sow the seeds of justice by their peaceful acts. What is the source of conflict among you? What is the source of your disputes? Don't they come from your cravings that are at war in your own lives? You long for something you don't have, so you commit murder. You are jealous for something you can't get, so you struggle and fight. You don't have because you don't ask. And you ask and don't have because you ask with evil intentions to waste it on your own cravings. Or do you suppose that scripture is meaningless? 
Doesn't God long for our faithfulness in the life he has given to us? But he gives us more grace. This is why it says, God stands against the proud, but favors the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will run away from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Cry out in sorrow, mourn and weep. Let your laughter become mourning, and your joy become sadness. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your word that brings life, that guides us, directs our steps, and encourages us. May the words that I speak this morning be your words also, Lord. May they be holy and pleasing to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In Plato's Republic, there is a very famous scene in which they describe a cave. And in that cave, a fire is started, and one of the things that is seen on the cave wall are shadows of images. And Plato describes this, that nothing that we actually know and see are the authentic around us, but they are only images or ideas of something else that was original. C.S. Lewis kind of played a little bit on this same idea in his uh, Silver Chair from the Chronicles of Narnia, in which there is a scene in the two children are underground with the green witch, and she tries to convince them that her make-believe world that she created, her world of evil, has a, has a sun and that it is the real sun, only the sun underground is just an image, a fake sun used with artificial lighting. But they know the difference. They know of a real and genuine, beautiful sun that shines above ground that they have seen and they have known in the world. I'm reminded of these images when I think of a story of, of Carson last spring. We, w we were going uh, to school in the morning, and this happened several times on the way to school. He would point to something out the window, and he would say, who created that? It, it, he would say, who created that tree? And my response would be, well, God created that tree. Then he would point to a house. Well, who created that house? Who, who did that house? And I would say, well, people put the house together, but the materials and items they use, God created, as well as the knowledge to put all of the pieces together, came from God. And we would continue on this for a good 10 to 15 minutes. Who created the grass? God created the grass. And so on. And I think of that story and what it means to, to look out at our world and be in awe and humility at the greatness of God. That in fact, God created a tree first. And because God created that tree out of nothing, we have beautiful trees and we are able to then take the seeds from the trees that already exist and make different kinds of trees. But even science cannot make that original tree, right? Because the original tree that was there was created by God. So everything after that are just images. They're just ideas that stemmed from the original one of God's creation. James talks a lot about uh, wisdom here in this section. And in fact, James is known as the wisdom book of the New Testament. We have lots of wisdom books in the Old Testament. Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Job is also known as a book of wisdom. But here in the New Testament, James has the focus upon what it means to be wise and humble in the mix of, if you remember last week, faith and works going together to have a faith that works, that is genuine, that is true. And so here in, in chapter 3, James ties in this understanding of wisdom being humility. Looking at the greatness of God and saying, God, you are so great, and I can't even compare to that greatness. Look at all that you have first done, and then everything after that are just copies of God's original and wonderful creation. 
But James takes it this further, and he talks about how wisdom is humility. And not only is it humility, but in order to be drawn away from the devil and things of this world, we need to draw near to God. And it's God who gives us that wisdom. We often think of, of wisdom, we use it in wrong terms all of the time in our culture. We think, oh, someone is wise, they're knowledgeable, they know all of the facts, they've been around a while. And, and some of that's true, but wisdom does not come just from having all of the right facts and right information. It does come from experience, but it most importantly comes from that connection of drawing near to God. That it is God's spirit that gives us wisdom to understand to know what it is that God has planned to make us humble and more caring. If we go with wisdom of the world, wisdom of the world says it's all about yourself, how much knowledge you can gain, how much you're able to do things on your own, and you do things because you want to do them for yourself. Wisdom that comes from God is for God and God's people and creation. It is a wisdom that stems from God's love for us that then is poured out to one another. James says, draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. That faith is drawing near to God, and when we draw near to God, it is poured out into the world around us each day. To connect this a little bit to the earlier in chapter 3, we didn't read that this morning, uh, but the beginning part of chapter 3, verses 1 through 12, James is talking about how only some people should be teachers. Not everybody should be uh, teachers or speakers. They, they don't have the right gifts for it. But it is a high uh, thing to be a teacher because what you say matters. And you might be even uh, put on a higher pedestal than someone else. In fact, that what you say, if it's from God, is going to be, have the power to change and draw others closer to God and not away or it has the power to crush and to destroy one another. So not everyone has the gifts for teaching, but not also is everyone have the gifts of being humble, or uh, more some it comes easier than others. I, I often use the phrase, um, and it's maybe judgmental and not kind, but sometimes I'll say, that person could use a little humble pie. On, on the other hand, acknowledging that, I... I am a person who it comes so easily to me that it's hard. And I have to pray, God, help me to, to not see the world that way, but to see it with your love. But also then, there's people who have the gift of, of humility, but they also have a little bit of pride, enough to balance out to what James is talking about here. I struggle sometimes with maybe not enough pride in that God loves me, and God cares for who I am, and yet sometimes I almost dismiss that and say it's not enough. It's a balance. Do you remember that the faith and works is a balance? Pride and humility, wisdom says, is a balance. You humble, you know that you are not as great as God, that God is beyond anything we could ever grasp. But at the same time, God loves us, and God wants to draw near to us and wants us to draw near to God. Uh, one of my favorite children's stories right now, I have lots of favorites, I love children's books, but it's called uh, What is God Like? by Rachel Held Evans and Matthew Paul Turner. And, and there's a, a page in it that I want to read here for you, a, a quote from that is uh, absolutely beautiful. It's, God is like a river, constant and life-giving. When you grow near God, you'll sprout up strong as a tree. When you grow near God, you'll sprout up strong as a tree because God is life-giving and sustaining. James wants us to tie all of this practical advice to drawing near to God. That's what wisdom is. Wisdom does not come from ourself, from anything that we think we attain while living on this earth. It comes from God. Humility comes from God. Peace, hearts that are filled with goodness and love come from drawing near to God. And if you think of a tree that has wonderful soil and water and nourishment, the roots are able to, to flourish and to go deep and to grow, and that tree can withstand so many storms because it's rooted 
and flourishing by the constant goodness of God when it grows near the Lord. This is the same God who created the tree to begin with, that we only have replicas of now, because God can create from nothing beautiful things. So when James says, draw near to God, that drawing near to God is drawing near and following the path that God has for us, which is a path of wisdom. Wisdom comes only from God's Spirit to guide us. It's not something that we do for ourselves. It's not something that we are trying to earn each day because then it's not wisdom, it's just knowledge. It's just education. It's, those are important things, but it becomes wisdom when we tie it and connect and know that it is God who guides our steps. It is God that we draw near. Earlier I was saying how I'm more of a humble person. An example of this, uh, in that, not in a good way to myself, but an example of this, when I was in high school and college, uh, I, I loved music, and in fact, I started actually in college as a music major, but I am my worst critic. And what happened is, I, is my humility became just a non-existent of self-worth, and I felt like I was never going to be good enough. And it got to the point where I gave up. Because I didn't have pride in the fact that God had created me as a beloved child. And, and I, I knew that, but my heart was saying, but in my mind, I'm not good enough. No matter how much I practice, and I had gotten one bad uh, grade in one of the classes, and then I thought, well, this is it. That can't be what I need to be doing. And I think of that story and how James talks about humility, but not a self-humility of selfless worth, but a humility that says God is great and loves me. And there is pride in that, pride in yourself because you are a beloved child of God. And therefore, then, when you have humility with one another, it is a connection of acknowledging, wow, this person next to me is also loved by God. It says here, and not in James, but oftentimes in the Old Testament, God is described as a jealous God. And we think of jealous, because we use it this way all the time, we use jealous as, I envy what that person has, and I really want it. That is not what it is referencing when it describes God as a jealous God, but God is in fact a jealous God in God's longing to be near us. Longing for us to be near God, longing to be present in our lives that God might guide us and lead us to ways better than, than we ourselves often choose. James's focus here is choosing, following after God, drawing near to God, so the decisions you make are turning away from the devil and turning to God. That's the language of James, not my own language there. But the language of wisdom is leaning into God, to be guided, to be uh, filled with God's spirit, to be humble and peaceful. But we can't do it on our own. That wisdom knows God is amazing and filled with grace, and that is what sustains us. That we are going to fail time and time again, and God will still be there drawing us near. And we get better each day when we draw near to God. When our roots soak into the soil, when we grow as a sturdy and strong tree, because God is the source of our nutrition and our life. Faith and works, how we live each and every day, how we breathe, comes from drawing near to God and God drawing near to us. So let us draw near to God in order to be uh, reminded of what it means to be loved and to live that out through faith that works. Let us pray. God, you call us to a life that is rooted in you. But we know that it's easier said than done some days. Some days we get just sidetracked. Or we want to choose the things that you tell us not to because we think at the time that they seem appealing or the better option. And God, we ask that you forgive us for the times when we don't come to you and we go our own ways. And God, we ask that you hold us when we are grieving because of our choices or the choices of others when we are suffering, we, we ask that you might be near us, that we can 
come to you to know that you forgive us, that your grace surrounds us, and that you will guide us into a path of strength and hope and joy so that your love might be made known, that your seeds will fall and to grow and uh, produce more trees each and every day. Amen. One of the ways we give thanks and joy to the Lord is through offering up our gifts of praise as in humility of strength and love, knowing that God is so great. Let us take up our offering. Let us pray. Divine source of wisdom, we bring these offerings with hearts attuned to your call. As we gather in your presence, may our gifts reflect the wisdom and discernment you desire for us. Use these offerings to nurture understanding, compassion, and justice in our world. Guide us to listen and act with insight spreading your love and grace, transforming our giving into actions that make a difference. Help us grow in our faith and commitment to your ways. In the holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
May you grow near God and sprout and spring strength of hope, peace, joy, and love that grows and nourishes not just your soul, but those around you each and every day. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace. Thank you.